The violent leftist who was arrested for attacking and trying to stab a California Republican congressional candidate in California tonight is free on bail. The assailant, Farzad uh, Fazuli, is scheduled to return to court Monday to enter a plea. Fazuli attacking Eric Swalwell's challenger, Rudy Peters, at a festival over the weekend. Peters described the attack today. We hear somebody screaming, F, you know, the cuss word, Donald Trump, F Donald Trump. And we look up and he's got his hand over his head with his middle finger up. He's coming at me, so I grab him, threw him on the ground. His shirt got ripped, his beer mug busted. I got off of him and that's when he jumped up and pulled the knife out and said he's going to kill me. The attack on Peters comes as the radical left ramps up violence ahead of the November midterms. Just last week, a Wyoming Republican office was set on fire only two days after it opened. Law enforcement suspect it was arson. The uh, staff of Republican Maine Senator Susan Collins receiving threatening calls over the Brett Kavanaugh confirmation vote. One caller telling a female staffer he hoped she would be raped. House Majority Whip Steve Scully says it's time for the radical Dems to denounce this left-wing violence. They need to be denouncing that kind of activity. Uh, there's no place for it. Uh, if somebody on the right was doing it, we'd be vocally denouncing it. They need to be denouncing that. On the left, you should not incite violence uh, or any kind of uh, assaulting people based on their political views. Joining us tonight, attorney, RNC committee woman for California, Harmeet Dillon. Harmeet, great to have you with us. Greg Jarrett, Fox legal Excellent. analyst, author of the New York Times bestseller. The Russia hoax. Greg, good to have you with us. Nice to be here. Continued Thanks, congratulations Thank on you. your continued success. Thank you. Uh, Harmeet, let's start with California delivering once again. I, I mean, this is getting really both dangerous and uh, just as stupid as it can be on the part of the left in this country. Yeah, you got it. I mean, it's far from denouncing it, Republican uh, uh, supporters in California are being subjected to this type of violence on a daily basis. You've got Maxine Waters encouraging it. You've got senators like Cory Booker encouraging it. As you know, Lou, I have a lawsuit against the city of San Jose and its police officers for allowing Trump supporters to be beaten up in the streets. And every day, anybody who's an out Republican here in the Bay Area is concerned that their safety may be at issue. And so, you know, we need to have a zero tolerance policy from law enforcement and from the government for this type of political violence that doesn't belong in America at all. Greg, your thoughts? Harmeet's exactly right. Um, people like Maxine Waters who go out there and say, you know, start harassing and confronting people. There's only a tiny step between that and physically attacking them, as we just saw yesterday uh, with this Republican candidate. Why in the world they haven't charged him with attempted murder? I don't know. I mean, he came after him with a knife, a switchblade, and but for the failure of the switchblade... Um, you know, you might have somebody dead as a consequence of this. And yet he's out on bail and he's not charged with attempted murder. It's astonishing to me, but that's Alameda County uh, in California. Well, in Nevada, a, a professor taking a gun into uh, the uh, school uh, in uh, the, the University of uh, Southern Nevada and shooting himself in protest of, uh, of Donald Trump. I mean, this stuff is building uh, and it is not a very... Uh, a pleasant uh, path or trajectory uh, that the the left is on in this country, Harmeet. Oh, I'm at, I mean, you know, it, it is not just sort of amusing anecdotes. This is a real thing here in our area, and it's throughout the country. And this is all a strain of Trump derangement syndrome, but it's a very virulent strain. And, you know, I don't know that we can turn this back other than through law enforcement actually taking this seriously. In Berkeley, a um, uh, professor actually beat somebody over the head with a bike lock repeatedly, causing massive facial injuries and broken bones. And, you know, he's already free. It's, uh, this was just last year. This is outrageous. Yeah. And yeah, uh, law enforcement is taking it uh, seriously, it seems. It's San Jose, the case you're prosecuting, is one in which they just stood down in the face of an obvious uh, uh, riot against uh, Trump supporters. But the court system in this country right now is behaving, I, I think, Greg, absolutely irresponsibly. Uh, they're just basically saying, you know, we'll see you, you're out on your own recognizance, and right. good luck uh, uh, the next time. And, and in places like, for example, where Harmeet is in San Francisco, I, where I used to be a criminal defense attorney back in the 80s, they used to throw the book at my clients. All, not anymore. There is this kumbaya mentality 
Uh, and a lot of it, I think, derives from the sanctuary city policies of San Francisco and other communities in California, where they are literally inviting people, criminals, to cross the border, and you get sanctuary in our city. And I feel badly for the citizens of that city that are now at risk. Well, uh, the the hatred right. of the left in this country for the, uh, for Republicans for the uh, for the right is palpable. It is uh, being acted out now uh, in streets and in campaigns. Uh, it, it is a very uh, sobering uh, uh, moment. It should be for the left, but uh, they are sort of giving it all a wink and a nod and uh, a tacit blessing with their silence and acquiescence. Uh, Harmeet, good to have you with us. We appreciate it. Greg Jarrett, thank, thank you, you sir. My pleasure.